Hello and welcome to another TLDR UK video. In what's being heralded by some as a groundbreaking agreement, the UK and Japan have, in principle, agreed to a free trade agreement. Continuing, and in some areas going above and beyond, the EU-Japan deal that acts as the status quo. So, in this video, we're going to take a look at exactly what's been agreed, and what it means for the UK and Japan going forward, and discuss whether this is the start of bigger and brighter things to come. Before we do start though, just a quick reminder that our offer on pin badges ends on Monday 14th. Right now, if you buy any three Countries with Shoes enamel pin badges, you'll get a fourth random badge added to your order for free. Also, if you're wondering, yes, we do have a Japan badge and a UK badge. A link to the store can be found in the description. So, as always, let's start with a bit of background. As we've covered on the TLDR EU channel, through the UK's former membership of the European Union, the UK has favourable access to the Japanese market, at least until the end of the transition period, through the EU-Japan Economic Partnership Agreement, an agreement which at the time of creation was touted as the world's biggest trade deal, covering nearly a third of global GDP and 635 million people. If you want to find out more about that trade deal in particular, then you can check out the video we made on it over on TLDR EU. There's a link in this video's description. The issue is that when the UK leaves the EU's customs union, they'll completely lose access to all of the EU's negotiated agreements and deals, including this one with Japan. So negotiations have been taking place to secure a post-Brexit free trade agreement. The hope is that a new deal would roll over and replicate large aspects of the EU-Japan free trade agreement and improve the relationship in others. So, what's actually been agreed? Well, we're not actually sure. The agreement, known formally as the UK-Japan Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, is only in principle. The actual legal text has yet to be agreed, let alone published, and certain areas are still very vague. Nonetheless, 10 key areas or benefits were publicly drawn from the negotiations, and luckily for us, the government even provided slides, so we don't even need to animate this bit. The 10 key areas are digital and data, financial services, British goods, iconic British food, creative industries, business mobility, Trans-Pacific Partnership, UK manufacturing, more malt, and tariff reductions in pork, beef, and salmon. Given how uh, specific some of these are, we'll take a deeper dive into some of the major ones, starting with data. Since the adoption of GDPR, among other things, there's been a greater and greater focus on data privacy, data ownership, and just how easily data can be moved from country to country. In turn, the agreement stresses the value of data privacy and protection, the ease of setting up servers in Japan, and net neutrality. Financial services. It's no secret that the UK has a significant global presence when it comes to financial services. That being said, to operate in a given country, you need a licence typically obtained from the regulator. And if you've ever had to deal with public service bureaucracy, you'll have some idea of how long things like this take. So the deal is designed to give UK firms a more streamlined process for obtaining a licence to operate in Japan with an annual dialogue between the relevant players designed to slowly but surely remove the regulatory friction. British goods and iconic British food. The free trade agreement wouldn't be complete if, well, it didn't cover trade. So it's far from a surprise to see tariff changes included. When the agreement comes into force, 99% of British goods would be able to enter Japan without any tariffs or extra charges at all, with a particular focus on food and drink, finance and tech. A new liberalised rule of origin system would also be adopted, making it easier for certain goods in sensitive areas to be produced in the UK, with parts and inputs from around the world to be exported to Japan. Food and agricultural goods do tend to be major sticking points, and this agreement was no different, with the FT reporting that Japan wanted Britain to continue sharing the quota that it gave to the EU saying that it should be up to London to argue with Brussels for a share of the existing quota, as Japan could not offer any more. Exactly what's been agreed on that front is still under wraps, although Japan has granted market access under a more generous quota than under the EU agreement for malt. Whoa! Malt! Malt! <laughs> I don't know how to do this bit. Anyway, that being said, there has been more progress made on the geographical indications front. Geographical indications will, under the terms of the agreement, increase from 7 to over 70, 
including protected status for English sparkling wine, Welsh lamb, and Yorkshire Wensleydale. Unsurprisingly, protections for cheese, pork, and beef have all taken a somewhat significant role in the negotiations, something which was to be expected given Trade Secretary Liz Truss's previous affection for the expansion of those markets. We're producing more varieties of cheese than the French. And we are selling tea to China. <laughs> Yorkshire tea. <laughs> when it comes to British food and drink, we have never had it so good. On the creative industries front, stronger commitments have been agreed when it comes to tackling online infringement of intellectual property rights. Business mobility has greatly strengthened the immigration policies between the two nations, allowing both to attract and move talent between countries. The specific example cited in the government press release highlights that a worker transferring from their UK headquarters to a Tokyo office will be allowed to bring their spouse and any dependents to stay with them for up to five years. Japan and the UK are also highly connected when it comes to the automotive industry, with a large number of Japanese businesses such as Nissan and Hitachi being major structural employers in the UK. A major point of this agreement, however, isn't purely economics. That's because it also focuses on the potential for the UK to join the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership. The government press release even highlights this benefit, saying the deal is an important step towards joining the CPTPP. This will give UK businesses a gateway to the Asia-Pacific region and help increase the resilience and diversity of our supply chains. A dedicated video on CPTPP is on the way, so make sure you're subscribed to see that when it's released. Heralding the agreement, Japan's foreign minister said, It's a very tough negotiation. But we've reached an agreement in principle in about three months, at an unusually fast pace, while maintaining the high levels of access to the British market under the Japan-EU EPA, we've improved our access to the British market on trains, cars and some auto parts. All in all, the agreement is expected to increase trade with Japan by some £15.2 billion over some indiscriminate period of time. Though, it is worth noting that these figures are actually based on a no-deal scenario, rather than comparing the access that Britain already had through the EU. If you do compare the previous EU deal, then this only actually represents a boost of 0.07% of GDP, leading some to criticise the role of such an agreement post-Brexit. That being said, it's important to stress that regardless of whether you agree with Brexit or not, the default was, prior to this agreement, no custom agreement with Japan at all with trade instead dictated by WTO turns, so any deal was always going to be some kind of improvement. However, FTAs aren't just about the economy anyway. It's easy to say that FTAs that don't significantly increase GDP aren't worth the bother, but that often misses the point. Free trade agreements are about politics, if not more so than economics. This is the first free trade agreement the UK has negotiated and signed in nearly 50 years, so it's certainly a big deal. Free trade agreements between allies are ultimately statements of geopolitical values and beliefs. They indicate commitment to the international system and multilateralism. They also strengthen existing relationships between allies. That's why a UK-EU free trade agreement is so important, in ways that go beyond just the trade benefits. Anyway, this UK-Japan free trade agreement clearly demonstrates this, and the UK's intention to join the CPTPP also shows that the UK still believes in multilateralism, free trade, and the international order, even despite Brexit. It also reaffirms the UK's interest in the region, at a time of growing tensions between the UK's allies and China, over flashpoints such as the South China Sea dispute and Beijing's crackdown in Hong Kong. Both topics we've discussed in other videos, which can be found linked down below. All of this was summarised by the UK government themselves in their strategic case put forward at the very beginning of negotiations. The UK intends to use its voice as an independent trading nation to champion free trade. Japan is the third largest economy in the world. The UK and Japan are among the most vocal advocates for free trade and most determined defenders of a rules-based international trading system. Together, we can create new opportunities for trade. 
boost our nation's economies, bring prosperity to our people, and ensure the UK remains a gateway to Europe and beyond. So what do you think? Is this agreement the start of great new things to come? Of a deeper relationship with Japan and other nations? Or is this ultimately just continuing the status quo of what was offered when Britain was part of the EU? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name listed at the end of the videos, just like Carol Kwan, Evan Trenko, and Ranorus, then be sure to back us on Patreon. A link to that can be found in the description.